Hello there, I'm Alex from the Skills Team. This Reflective Writing podcast is an extract from our Reflective Writing live stream. If you're interested in watching our streams live, we currently live stream Wednesdays 12.30 till 1.30pm. I hope that you enjoy this podcast. But Tim, what are we talking about today? We are talking, Alex, uh, about uh, reflective writing and being reflective and how do you do reflective writing? Uh, mm-hmm. We had some questions about that after our last academic exactly writing, writing workshop. workshop. Yeah, yeah. So we thought, you know what, why, why don't we just do a live stream on reflective writing? And I like this. I think it's a really good topic uh, and it's very important. So it should be fun today. We should be having a good time, I would think. Yeah. So just to give you an overview of what we'll be covering in this reflective writing workshop, first of all, we'll be talking, we'll be having a chat about what reflective writing is, why you need to do it, and giving some advice. We've got some student advice lined up that we got on social media um, from the at Derby Uni Library Instagram account. I don't quite know where to start, though, Alex. Shall we? Shall we begin with just talking about reflective writing yeah. and what it is and and what we do with reflective writing? Let's do that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, as I just mentioned, is we're going to have a little discussion about reflective writing. So Tim, would you like to explain to everyone in the audience what is reflective writing? Yeah, so reflective writing is the uh, art of uh, writing down the experience that you have lived through, essentially. So in a very odd uh, way, it's basically just describing something that you have experienced at some point. Um, and you do that uh, for different reasons. And one of the main reasons... We talk about this all the time, we talked about this in the academic writing uh, session as well, is to uh, look back at what what you've done. It's a sort of a feedback loop for yourself in a way. Um, so it's it's part of that critical skill set that we are trying to teach you at university. Uh, and the better you become at uh, reflective writing and keeping track of you know your experiences and things that you've learned from, the better hopefully you'll become uh, as a student and the better your work will become. But it's also useful for more than that, though, isn't it, Tim? It's also useful for things outside of just being a student. Yeah. And I like to incorporate reflective writing, or not only reflective writing, just reflection into everything that I do. This live stream, we've constantly reflected on this. This is our third week of doing it, and we've improved every time. And you can apply it to almost everything that you do. So, Tim, why do people actually need to do reflective writing? What's the purpose of it? So there's a number of reasons for it. and I'd, I'd like to begin with a very practical um practical reason for becoming good at reflective writing and that's actually that in your professional career you might well end up in a situation where you have to uh, apply reflective writing um, but you might well end up uh, in, a, in a professional setting where reflective writing is really important so if you imagine for example if you're a police officer and you have an interaction with uh, an individual at a certain point you will have to write a report about that interaction and quite often you use reflective writing skills for that um, because, you know, you're reflecting on that experience, on that situation. Um, if you're a nurse, for example, in a big hospital, uh, reflective writing is really encouraged to help you to stay on top of the learning, of the constant evolution of things that you're working with. Um, if you're in a, in a library, you know, for me, reflective writing in this role that I've got here uh, helps me to uh, understand where I think we can do better what sort of things we can improve on. And it's not always in the form of reflective writing. So um, I think that's actually quite an important distinction to make. Reflective writing is keeping a diary, right, in a way. Um, But it doesn't have to be an extensive story. It could literally be scribbling down just a couple of notes about something that you've done. Um, So we'll talk a bit more about that later on. But yeah, it, it doesn't have to be extensive at all. I just think that reflective writing is really important because at univer- and reflection just in general at university because at university you're there often at undergraduate level for three years at master's for two semesters or maybe more if you're doing it part-time like I am. Um, but at each, each semester you've got a chance to improve and reflect upon what you've done in the past and find a way to take that step up. And every time that you study a semester, you can think back, find what you can improve and work out what you need to do differently next time. Yeah. And the fact that you've it's such a long you're at university for a long period of time, it allows you to constantly improve what you're doing, and yeah. that's why is that is why reflection is really important at university. But we do have individual reflective writing assignments as well as just doing reflection on things like feedback and how you've done. Yeah, feedback is an interesting one, isn't it? In a way, that's um, um, your lecturer reflecting on your work. 
if you think about it in that sense. So again, that's a, a form of reflective writing that we probably don't always realize is reflective writing. Um, and again, it, it harks back to the idea that keeping a diary, which used to be really popular, I don't think it is anymore, but keeping a diary in a way is reflective writing and people have sort of taken that as the gold standard, but there's quite a lot of different ways of being reflective and, and keeping track of your experiences. We'll definitely cover those later on in this session. So, Tim, some people, sometimes people are given reflective writing assessments. Mm -hmm. How do those differ from the traditional normal assessment that you're given? So let's compare a reflective writing assessment with um, an essay, for example, with a research question that you get. So the first thing is that the research question is different in the reflective writing uh, assignment because you're writing about an experience that you've, uh, that you've chosen to write about. So let's say you're uh, a teaching student, primary education student, and you want to uh, write about a day in the class, uh, and that's part of your assignment that you describe how you planned it, uh, what sort of experiences you had, whether you managed to keep the kids under control, whether you think they learned anything, what were your successes, what were the weaknesses of the day. That becomes in itself a very um, individual piece of work. So it's not led by a research question, it's led by what your experience was. So that's one of the key differences. Um, and then the other thing uh, that makes it a bit more unique is because you're drawing on your own experiences, you don't necessarily need to draw on a lot of resources. So it differs per uh, reflective writing assignment, and there will be different criteria. Always check with your lecturer what those criteria are. But you may well find that you, in the reflective writing piece, you only refer to one or two sources that you've mm. drawn on for that experience. And that can be fine. You know, that doesn't necessarily have to be a problem with reflective writing. And often those sources are more theories about practice or professional practice. Yeah. So when I've reflected, I've looked at what, especially in my own, which is the background of it is the law, uh, there is professional conduct guides that we have. So I reflect on how my conduct matches those guides. And I also reflect on theories other people have and methods of doing things other people have. And I would compare those to what I've done. Absolutely, yeah. Writing a reflective assignment can actually be a lot different and a lot more difficult to start or to get your head around at, just at the start compared to a normal assignment. At university, constantly throughout your three years, you're told, well, that's an undergraduate level, uh, and a general degree, you are told to not write in the first person, to, to write in the third person. You're told to write uh, um, using other people's ideas and only really talking about your own ideas when you make a point or conclusion or critical analysis. Whereas reflective writing, you're talking completely about yourself. And so for some students, that actually can be difficult. And it can be difficult to write like that because it, you're just almost programmed not to. I know I struggled when I initially started writing an assignment like that. So, Tim, do you have any advice for students for changing between writing a normal assignment to a reflective assignment? Yeah, so the, the there's a number of things that you need to keep into account. So uh, there's the first and third person aspect that we'll talk about a bit more later on because that's actually mm -hmm. it can be a bit complicated. Um, but yeah, there's, that's one of the key uh, differences that you write in first person. Um, and if you feel that that isn't right, then that means that you're not writing reflectively. Um, that sounds quite... Um, I would say as a stark rule, if you like, but if you feel that it's difficult to write in first person, then you're probably not reflecting correctly on the experience because you're not using your viewpoint to do it. So uh, if you write in first person, and again, we'll touch on that a bit later, um, it will it should already set your mindset slightly different. So reflective writing in first person is I did this, uh, this happened to me. Um, and it's it's about you as a person going through that experience. Um, and in an essay in general, we ask people to write in third person, so uh, and the passive voice as well. So it's about they and uh, what what a certain object or subject uh, experience. So it's a different way of looking at it. Mm. But if you are struggling to write reflectively or get in that mindset, there are some models out there that you can help you. Models can really help you to. With your with not academic writing, with your reflective writing, and one of those models is called Borton. I think it was from 1953, and essentially this model splits up reflective writing into three steps. So first of all, 
you think about what the event is. So you talk about what happened and you really try to map out what actually occurred. A different model suggests doing a six minute brain dump for this, but really just set out what happened in the event, what you thought, what you felt, and try to describe the situation. So that is talking about what your personal experiences are in the moment. The second step then is to build on that with a second step of a model. So I'll type that into the chat once I finish talking about it. So it's Bolton, B-O-R-T-O-N. So the second step of the model is to actually think about what happened. So thinking about how what actually occurred, was it good, was it bad? What would you like to have done slightly differently? So asking yourself questions, and Tim will show you where you can get some of these questions from on the skills guides at the next stage of the workshop. So that is actually something that is really useful. So you can think about what you would do differently. But that's the second stage. Then the third stage is probably what I would think is the most important. You've reflected on your progress so far and you've thought, hmm, what can I do differently? But the third stage is actually the future focus stage where you think, okay, what am I going to do differently? How can I achieve that? What actual positive real world steps can I make to achieve the goal that I want? So I would always look at what, so I would look at what I could do differently that wouldn't actually affect what I have done in the past uh, that is positive. So when you reflect, it's really important to think about two things, uh, what went well and what didn't went, go well. And when you make changes to what didn't go well, it's really important to bear in mind what did go well so that when you make those changes, you don't actually end up changing the things that did go well into something that didn't. Yeah. But it's also worth considering that just because something went well doesn't mean it can't go even better. And still thinking about, well, this went well, but how can I take this from well to amazing? So, for example, some students may be happy with a 2-1 degree. But I would challenge you to think, 2-1 degree is good, but how can I do even better? And by just thinking about ways that you could improve, even though you've got what you wanted, that is the way that you can really set yourself up in almost a growth mindset of improving yourself and becoming even better. So yes. have you got anything you want to add to that, Tim? Yes, because I've now done my homework. You didn't tell me hey. I had to talk about the specific models. Uh, I might be a doctor, but I haven't got a memory. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I've looked at the models now, uh, and I've, I've found in particular Kolb and uh, Borton. And Borton, in my opinion, is the... Um, yeah, and I understand now why you phrased the question that you did, because I do have some issues with, with using these models and relying on the models Um for your reflective writing, but I will go through them uh, quickly. So Borton is the what, so what, and what next model. So it's a case yes. of looking at what's happened, why that matters, and then what are you going to do to fix it or prevent it happening again or whatever it is. And in my opinion, that's not necessarily... Um, uh, it's not the, the always the best way to write something, is how I'm going to phrase that. So... Even though it's a model that works and you can use it as quite a prescriptive way of doing things, um, it's not always the easiest to get your head around how you're supposed to write if you use that model. Does that make so, sense? That makes sense. So what Tim's trying to say is it's if you're struggling to think to write reflectively, these models can be good. Although yeah. I don't feel that you have to stick rigidly to them and write That's every exactly single it. paragraph strictly yeah. to them. Do you feel that you can be slightly flexible with how you write as long as you do actually make sure that you have positive action points and positive and real development so that you really are analysing the event that happened and trying to think about ways that you could improve in the yeah. future. So they're the crucial parts, but actually the form that it takes doesn't, isn't always, doesn't always have to be in those exact questions. No. And by changing the question, you actually might find different results that could work. Yeah. So one of the, uh, the other models that's really popular... Um, and actually, I used it quite extensively in my PhD and things like that, is the Experiential Learning Cycle by a chap called Kolb. Um, I'm trying to remember his first name now, and I can't actually remember it. Uh, but Kolb, okay. K-O-L-B, uh, wrote this uh, model that's basically a concrete experience. So he, he talks about something that's happening or has happened. And he talks about how you can actually use reflection to uh, learn from that. And he uses something that's um, 
in a way, it, it helps you to think more clearly about what you are learning. It's it's more of an active way of reflecting than looking at what so what and what next. It's a it's a different way of thinking about it. But we're going to get to uh, the bit where I can point out some resources uh, because we've got so, yeah. quite a lot of material on all this. Reflective writing primarily is for you, right? You're not necessarily reflective writing for other people, even though if it's for coursework, you write for other people. But in, in principle, the, the art of reflective writing is meant to help you reflect on what's happened, right? Nobody else really. It's all about you, and you need to keep that in mind when you're doing it. It's a way of improving your skills, isn't it? It's an assignment that is made purposely to give you to help you develop the art of reflection, but also help you to individually develop on the key skills that matter yeah. for your subject area. Yeah. So for me, I I divide one about the skills involved in law. So I wrote about negotiation. I wrote about um, doing advocacy. I wrote about doing presentations and also writing assignments. And I reflect on all of those experiences as part of one big essay. And that really helped me develop those skills. And I've kept reflecting ever since. And now I reflect on every single thing I do. Yeah, uh, I always we always have a debrief after these streams, for example, where we talk about what's gone well, what's got what could go better. So we'll talk yeah. about the fact that um, Tim didn't know about the models and what we I was to not prepared for that. it. <laughs> so we can fix that in the future, so it doesn't happen again. And that's what reflection is all about, because things like this will happen. And yeah. there's always when you start something up, no one's an expert at anything. The only reason why they get better at it is because they reflect over time and they learn and develop those skills. Absolutely. So. Can I just, uh, just actually, one, one more thing I want to touch on with that as well? Sorry, Alex. I know you've got your time plan and all that. And now you're I do have my time plan, Tim. Um, but one of the things that I think is really important is that um, sometimes people feel that um, reflecting properly takes too much time. Uh, and, you know, it's a pain in the neck and you've got to do it. Someone's told you you have to do it. So they don't actually put the effort into getting reflective writing right. Reflective writing, right, yeah. Um, but basically, um, like I've highlighted before, you're doing it for you. You're not doing it for anyone else. And it takes um, learning yourself, learning about yourself, to actually get to the point where you're comfortable reflecting on things. So I can definitely say, state with 100% with certainty that at some point in my life, I would have hated doing reflective writing and reflecting on my actions, reflecting on my experiences, because I I just, you know, I'd lived in the moment and whatever. Once you get into that mindset of reflecting is good and you can reflect on everything, that's when your critical skills really start to pick up. Um, and reflective writing is just really important for that particular purpose. So do take that away. Um, it might not always be fun, but it's definitely, definitely got value. And it really does help you to achieve your goals. So I'd 100% recommend it. Um, just before we move on to the next stage of our our event, which is going to be our You Might Find It Useful to Know section, just before we get to that, I've actually, uh, what something we try to do for these workshops is we try to get student voice in them because we're all about co-creation. And we so what we did for this workshop is we went out on social media on our Instagram account. So we went on our story. So if you're interested in following us on Instagram, follow us on Derby Uni Library on Instagram. Tim, can you put that in the chat, please? And we asked students on there, what are your tips for reflective writing? And so we've got five tips that we're going to read out now, and we're going to comment on them a little bit and see what we think. Can we, can we just highlight, Alex, the fact that, that, that... Oh, you've just gone silent for me. I don't know what's happened there. Um, I, can you talk for a second, just so I can make sure... Hello, Tim, my old friend. Yes, you are audible. Hopefully That's you can good. hear me again. Yes, I cool. can. Yeah, something happened. I don't know what it was. Uh, but just to, just to point out, Alex, I'm still the boss, yeah? I'm going to push you out of the screen in a second. Can you put that in chat now, Tim? Bloody hell. Oh, what? <laughs> That's fine, Tim. I didn't say you should do it. I said can you? Because no, uh, really. otherwise I'd just stop and text. Anyways, so <laughs> let's talk about our student tips for reflective writing then. So we've got five. So Tim is the boss. Would you like to describe them or would you like me to? Um, well, shall we just go by uh, the first one? And Because uh, we had a bit of a debate about this before, didn't we? We did, yes. Yeah, so uh, the first one is using the first person is a must. Um, and that might be true in some cases, but not in all cases. And this is actually... Um, if you're reflecting for yourself, yes, absolutely. Write in first person, don't worry about it. 
Sometimes your uh, academics, your lecturers will expect you to write most of the work, even though it's reflective, in third person, and you will have to try and make it work. And it's not necessarily easy, it's not necessarily fun, and in my opinion it's uh, almost definitely wrong to ask that to be reflective writing. But sometimes that's the case, so definitely make sure you check with your academic what is expected of you in terms of style for the reflective assignment. But as a general rule, I 100% agree with the advice. As a general rule, that for using first person is a must. Yeah. If you are told to write in first person and then you don't throughout, that's probably not going to be, you're not going to be reflecting on things properly. No, so do make sure that you use the first person if yeah. you've been asked to, which is yeah. almost, which as a general rule, is almost always the case. Yeah. But it isn't always the case. So do check your assignment brief. Yeah. So, so one of the, the second piece so of advice. The, no, just one more thing about that. One of the rules of academic writing is that you keep the same person and the same tense when you are writing. And that's where mm -hmm. it gets confusing, right? If you have to flip between first and third person in an assignment, that's bad academic writing practice. And you've been taught that that's bad academic writing practice, and that's why that is confusing. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a problem. But let's move on to the second one, which is much more sane. Yes. So the second piece of advice is don't write in the same way as you would write an essay. And I totally agree. The first thing I would always recommend doing is distinguishing the two. Don't act like this is an essay. It's not. It's called it's a reflective writing essay. Yes, but it's not the same as a normal essay. So approach it differently. Approach it with a different mindset. Write it in a different structure. And don't do what you'd usually do in terms of the way that you'd write it. Uh, so follow different pieces of advice. A lot of things will be similar, but just make sure that you do change what needs to be changed. Yes. Yeah. Then the third one that we got is uh, ensure you think of a positive action to take. And that's actually really important. So, um, again, with uh, critical thinking, we've talked about in the academic writing workshop quite a bit. Being critical doesn't necessarily mean being negative, right? And actually drawing a conclusion from an experience, even if that is something like I have to improve... That's not negative. The fact that you've drawn that conclusion is a positive. So uh, always try and, and use reflection honestly um, it, as a means to improve because improvement is always positive. Right? If you realize that you have to improve, you're doing it right. If you're not realizing you have to improve, then you're doing it wrong. And I think that touches on that point I made earlier um, that you have to learn to reflect and learn to accept that in particular. I totally agree. The fourth piece of advice is reflect as you go along and do what you need and do what you need to reflect on. So essentially what I believe that means is to keep reflecting as you go. So don't just think I reflect just in one block at the end when my assignment's due to be written. If you know you've got a reflective essay coming up, start reflecting early, reflect on the experiences as they happen immediately. Almost like keeping a diary of the event. And I actually found that really useful. And when I did my reflective essay in my second year, a lot of students tried the, the other option, which is to just write the essay when they write the essay and reflect then. But they've forgotten all about the, how they felt in the moment. Yeah. And so they were almost making stuff up or feeling things differently. Yeah. Well, if you've got the raw, unfiltered emotions written down as they happened or just after they happened, that can really help you do reflective writing. So I'd agree with that. Yeah. There's another, uh, there's a nice interesting parallel with this as well. Uh, that's a typical librarian parallel, I would say. But when you are searching for information, you know, people always um, forget to write down where they found the information. And they then struggle later on to find that information because they didn't write down where to do it. So, yeah, reflecting, you know, you need to do it continuously. It's something that should be, uh, it doesn't have an on off switch. It should always just be there. You should always be willing to reflect on what's going on. Yeah, and keeping track of that is really important. And the final one, this is a cute one, I suppose, is be yourself. So we haven't got a swear jar this week, I don't think, have we? I've not. Uh, actually... I hope we. I hope we don't need one, Tim. Well, I've already sworn, so you know, oh. it's, uh, yeah, you missed it. Uh, if if Naomi had been here, oh, 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 oh she oh, is here. She's watching. Oh, she's here. Yes, um, yeah. Naomi would definitely have told me that I would need to. Um, pay money into some charity pot for, I think I said bloody hell. Anyway, uh, back to the point of being yourself. You're writing for yourself. You're reflecting for yourself. So use that, you know, as a positive and just be yourself in the way that you write as well. 
don't worry too much about the form and the structure as long as you can understand it that's great of course if you then need to put it into a piece of coursework to give to your lecturer you need to go through to make sure that they can understand what you were saying as well but you know you can do that iteratively you can build on that later on and my take on that piece up is also is just a bit it's the same but slightly different in the sense of actually just don't lie to yourself mm -hmm. don't write things and try to reflect on things that aren't true yeah, yeah. Be don't honest. act like you haven't got flaws in what you do because or don't act like you're only flawed there are yeah. positives that are negative be honest otherwise the reflective process isn't going to work no. as well as it should do yeah. so make sure you're honest and make sure that you're telling the truth in your reflective writing absolutely yes being honest is you know key um and that sounds you know I, maybe i should become a thicker but it's really with reflective writing it's definitely one of the key things that you need to have right so Tim, before we move on do you have any additional pieces of ref advice reflective writing or have you already given them all out no i think the the only one the final one i suppose that could be on that list is just do it you know the nike slogan uh, just get on with it don't don't fret about it do it for yourself um, actually one thing i don't think we have that on our schedule um using uh something like OneNote could be really useful as well yes so actually using a, a tool for it, it can be really powerful and all students have access to OneNote as part of office 365 which yeah. can be found through you do yes. so try and use an app like that i that could be something that you could use to note down your experiences instantly so i have google keep which is something i use similarly to just note down my experiences as just after they happen on my phone to have to have a laptop and formally sit down to do it so that could be something that's useful to do that then 